this is weird. I don't normally do three videos in one day, but somebody made a comment, and it actually, I've been thinking about it ever since I read it, and I'm glad they made it because they brought up a good point. Um, they didn't mean to bring up a good point. I think they were trying to be a little a, a pissy bitch or just trying to be funny. I'm not really sure, but they actually brought up a good point, so I'm glad they said it. And I have to be, I need to, I need to keep my voice down because I got a kid over here who just went to bed and I got one across the hall that went to bed about 30 minutes ago. So I have to be quiet because tomorrow is the first day of school. I can't get loud and I have to go to bed myself because I'm going to get up extra early in the morning to make sure everything's squared away. Everybody gets their happy little butts out of here on time. Especially my younger son because we checked his bus route and his bus is actually coming quite a bit earlier this year than it did last year for some reason the route has totally changed so his bus is coming a lot earlier so we need to make sure he's out there on time okay and I do not want to drive him to school on the first day of school oh my god have you, have you ever driven a kid to school the first week of school is just freaking chaos it is like Mad Max trying to drive your child to school it is it's crazy as hell. I'm not driving that kid to school. Like, no, you're going to get on that bus. I am not dealing with that crazy-ass traffic around that school. The first week is always really bad. After that, it seems to kind of calm down. Everybody kind of gets in the flow. But that first week, oh, dear God, everybody loses their minds. Nobody knows where to go. They're getting in the wrong lane. They're honking their horns. They're cutting each other off, and it's just awful. I try to avoid that. So... For years, I had to do it because, oh my God, for so many years, I had to drop my kids off every day and pick them up every day and they didn't ride the bus. It was a whole thing. But anyway, I did that for many years. I had to take them to school every day and pick them up. They would go to the after school program or they would go to, you know, some after school thing and I'd have to go pick them up after work and it was a pain in the ass, but we got through it. Anyway, I'm trying to be quiet. So I made this point. And they, uh, so it was in the video where I was showing you my peanut plant in my backyard. I did get to mow and everything looks really cool in the front and everything. It looks much better. I pulled some weeds and I went around my little flowers and my little flowers I have planted everywhere. Pulled some weeds out of there. Got them looking nice. And, um, I had a bunch of weeds pop up this week for some reason, just out of nowhere. But I got them all up and, um. So in that video where I was showing you my peanut plant in my backyard, somebody said, well, it looks to me like you can afford Lunchables. Why don't you buy kids for your, you need to, something like you need to buy Lunchables for your kids because it looks like you can afford it. And it, they actually brought up a good point. I, I don't know if they were trying to be a, 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 an asshole or if they were trying to be funny. I don't know. I never said I couldn't afford Lunchables. I absolutely can't afford Lunchables, but they, I'm glad they said that because they brought up something that I've talked about before, but I, I don't think you can stress it enough. I live well below my means. I live below, I, not well below, I live below my means. I've always done that my whole life. Um, as an adult, I've always tried to live below my means. I don't spend every penny I make. Um, I try to save money. I invest money. I, I, I put money into my retirement every month. I've been doing it since I was 27 years old, so over 20 years now. I put money in my retirement fund. I have some investments in cryptocurrency. Not a lot. I don't have a whole lot. I have a little bit. Um, you know, I save money wherever I can. It's very important to me to not waste money. Um, I could have a bigger house. I could, I could have gotten a much bigger house. I could have gotten a house twice this size. I would have qualified for a loan to get a house twice as big as the one I have. But my question is, why? Why would I do that? And that's, it's a, it's a way of thinking. It's like a philosophy. It's the way you live your life. Why would I buy a house twice as big? Who am I trying to impress? I don't, I don't need a house twice as big as this. I, I could have gotten much more house. I could be driving a brand new car. I could go get my nails done whenever I want. I could go shopping and buy expensive clothes. You know, I could buy my kid a car. Um, I could have given him my son a car. I didn't give him a car. I paid for the car, and he paid me. He has to make payments every month on it. And he has to pay for the upkeep. Um, I pay for the insurance and taxes, 
but he has to pay for gas, maintenance, if anything goes wrong with it, he has to pay to fix it. And he has to make a payment to me and he has to keep his grades up, which is not a problem for him. His grades are actually super good. Um, yeah, I'm not giving him a car. I'm not, I'm not giving him a car. <laughs> And, it, and I hear a lot of people justify it like, well, it was an old junker. We wouldn't use it. I wouldn't give it to him anyway. I had that, I had a Nissan pickup truck. And I wouldn't have given him that. I'll, I'll sell it to him. You can make payments. Um, he didn't want it though. Long story short, I ended up selling the truck and then buying a different vehicle. I'm not giving it to him because I want him to learn to work for things he wants. And I think if a kid, if you just give a kid a vehicle, and I'm not saying every kid, I'm not picking on anybody. But if they got a little skin in the game, if they are paying for that car, I think they drive it more carefully. I think they take better care of it overall. And again, I'm not saying every kid. I'm not saying, if you want to give your kid a car, give your kid a car. I don't care. You don't have to justify it to me. I'm just explaining my philosophy of life. Can I afford Lunchables? Yeah, sure can. I could buy a truckload of Lunchables. I'm not gonna because I'm all about value for the dollar. I'm all about getting my money's worth. And in my opinion, Lunchables are a convenience item. They are too expensive for what you get. Some little circles of meat and cheese and some crackers. Honey, no, I'm not buying that. I don't care. I could have a billion dollars in the bank. I still would not buy those things. I would not buy Lunchables. Mm -mm. No, I will buy stuff for you to make your lunch. You know, you can make whatever you want. You know, I'm not buying you caviar and shit, but, you know, I will give you stuff to make, you, you know, get whatever you need to make your lunch. You can learn to make your lunch. My kids know how to pack a lunch, do make sandwiches and get everything ready and make their own. I don't do it. They do it. They can pack their own lunch. They can take care of themselves. I have taught them how to cook some stuff. I've taught them how to clean up after themselves. I could pay to have a maid come here three days a week if I wanted. I could pay to have somebody mow my yard I could pay to have everything done around here if I wanted to. I mean, if we're talking about, can you afford it? Yeah, I can. Would I ever pay for that stuff? No. No, I wouldn't because I'm able-bodied. My children are able-bodied. We are all perfectly capable of doing these things, and we do every day. I'm teaching them to clean up after themselves. I'm teaching them to take care of themselves, do for themselves, and not expect somebody else to do it for them. And it's just a subject I'm very passionate about. Because I hear people all the time, and I'm not, again, I'm not picking on anybody, and I'm not judging anybody, but if you can't afford to pay for the basics, you might want to look at where your money's going. And again, I am not trying to judge anybody, but I always try to live below my means, and I think that would be good advice for anybody. Don't, don't look at it like, well, I have $100, just an example, like, I have $100, hmm. There's this item over here. It's $100. I have $100. I'm going to buy the $100 thing. Or you could take that $100 and save it or put it into something else. I wouldn't go up to the maximum of what you have. Don't borrow the maximum amount. Ooh, I can afford a new car. Let me go buy a new car. I would rather just keep driving my seven-year-old car that runs just fine. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I just look at it differently, but... I never said I couldn't afford Lunchables. This is not about, this is not about whether or not I can afford it. It's about whether or not it's a wise financial decision, you know, um, and I don't think it is. In my opinion, it's, it's not a wise financial decision. That's why I don't do it. So, uh, yeah, that's why we we do our own yard work here. We clean our house. I don't pay anybody to come clean my house. I've never paid anybody to come clean my house. The only time I paid somebody to mow my yard was when my younger son was just born. He was born in the summertime. And I had a lot of lasting... I had some health problems after he was born for several months. I was not doing great. And he was not doing great either. He was very colicky and I was not sleeping at night and my older son at that time was only four years old and I was on my own I was my I had not because somebody left me but I, I kicked a sorry sack of shit out of my house and I was on my own and that was fine because I knew I was on my own and I had already decided whatever I have to do I will do the situation was that bad 
but that's personal shit I don't want to get into. But for two months, I paid a guy to come mow my yard once a week. And at that time, I had a, I lived in a different part of town. I had a very small yard. Um, it wasn't too expensive. I really couldn't afford it, but I did it because I literally couldn't do it, and my four year old couldn't do it. I didn't have anybody to do it. I was I I had no choice. Um, I physically was not capable. I, I had some physical restrictions. I was not supposed to be lifting anything or I had some problems. Okay. I could not mow the yard and I didn't have anybody to do it. I don't have any family here. I got no, no family here. I got nobody here. Um, so yes, I paid for somebody for two months to mow my yard and that was it. And after that, after that two months had passed, I was well enough to start mowing it myself. So I started mowing it myself for the rest of the summer after that. So he mowed it in like June and July, and then August, I started mowing it again myself. Um, I'm not judging people that pay somebody to come clean their house or mow their yard or any of that stuff. I'm, I'm not judging anybody for that. Um, you know, I do spend money on things that some people would think is wasteful. Um, I go get my hair done. It doesn't look like much right now. It's actually, it's pretty dry. I tell you something. I've been using that stuff from URA Soap Works, that hair conditioner stuff. Oh, it's wonderful. It is so nice. It's a wonderful detangler. Hang on a minute. I'll show it to you. This has nothing to do with what I was talking about, but it's a leave-in hair conditioner right here. Um, it has, what does it have in it? URA. I don't have my glasses on. Siloxane compound, jojoba oil, Argan oil, frankincense, and coconut oil. This stuff is wonderful. It makes my hair shiny. It's pretty much dry. I put four or five little spritzes of this in my hair while it's still wet, and I comb it through. It's a wonderful detangler, and it smells really good. It detangles, adds luster, restores moisture, and increases flexibility to reduce breakage. Good stuff. Anyway, I've, I've used it several times now, and I really like it. I, every time I wash my hair, while it's still wet, I'll put some in it. And it also helps with frizziness. If you have frizzy, any frizziness, it really seems to help with that, too. And you don't have to use much. Okay, anyway, the hell was I saying? My dad thinks I waste money because I pay somebody to I go get my oil changed at a service station, and I don't do it myself. I could do it myself, but I consider that, you know, like... A worthwhile thing because what am I gonna do with five gallons of oil in a filter my dad my dad is just so he lives in a different world he's like just throw it in your backyard what are you worried about <laughs> damn it daddy we can't do that here I don't see why not <laughs> need to be changing your own oil save money I know I know I could save money shit I sure could but I anyway what I wanted to say is it's a good habit to get into to live below your means. We're not doing without, you know, we're not doing without. I make sure we have what we need, but I also want my kids to understand that just because you want something doesn't mean mama's going to get it for you. You know, when I said you can get a job and get your own Lunchables, I wasn't kidding. You know, if you want it bad enough, you can work for it. And all of a sudden they don't want it so bad. Oh, well then you can just make a lunch out of what we have here then. I do make my kids work for things they want. I don't just buy them whatever the hell they want. They can they can do work and they can earn the money to pay for it. And I want them to learn to live below their means as well. Don't spend every dollar you have. And if you're doing it to try to impress other people, I'm just let you in on a little secret. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody's looking at your house. Nobody's looking at your car. They don't give a shit what brand purse you have. Nobody gives a flying fuck because everybody is too busy doing their own thing. Nobody gives a rat's ass about it. Don't waste your money on it. If that's the only reason you're doing it to try to impress people, don't waste your money because nobody cares. They're more worried about how they look to people. They don't give a shit how you look. I don't need a big fancy house. I like my house. I like it and I got it at a hell of a deal and I was really glad to get it. And I, I didn't want a more expensive house. And there were bigger, more expensive houses on the market that I could have bought. I could have easily qualified for a loan because one of the things is, for my whole life, I have tried really hard to not have debt. I pay off debt as soon as possible. I try to not have debt. 
I try to save money. You know, I'm not out there constantly applying for credit cards and shit. I have a credit score. I think my credit score right now is like 820. I think it's 820 last time I checked. I could have qualified for a loan to get a much bigger house. I didn't want a much bigger house. And I'm looking at the payment like, okay, yeah, that's a big payment. Um, do I really want to make a payment like that for 20 years? No, I don't. So let's go with the cheaper house. Sounds good to me. It's a lot less stress and it's it's fine. It'll work. It's just me and it's the three of us. We don't need some big old house. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I think this is an important lesson that a lot of people need to hear. And I'm not I'm not talking about you. I'm not calling anybody out. So if you feel, you know, convicted or like I'm trying to persecute you, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just trying to say that <laughs> what am I trying to say? I don't even know. It's late. I'm just trying to say just like Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Park, well, to paraphrase Jeff Goldblum, just because you can doesn't mean you should. You know, they were so busy focusing on what they could do that they didn't stop to think about what they should do or something like that. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that's how I look at a lot of things. You know, I grew up, and so grateful to my parents, I grew up understanding how to save money how to budget for things, have patience, patience. And that's the one thing a lot of people don't have is patience. We live in a right now culture. We live in a microwave culture. I want it right now. I don't want to wait for it. I don't want to save up for it. I don't want to do without. I want it right now. Well, if you want it right now, that may come at a cost that's higher than you think. And just because you can doesn't mean you necessarily should. I would rather wait and, you know, maybe I could find a better way to do it, a more economical way to do it. And I would be that way no matter how much money I had. Again, if I had a billion dollars in the bank, my mindset wouldn't change. My mindset would be exactly the same. I'd still be driving the same damn car. I'd probably still be living here unless people found out I had a billion dollars in the bank and started harassing me. <laughs> Then I might have to move away. <laughs> but uh, no, nothing would really change. I've thought about it a lot. How would my life change if I had a billion dollars? I'd pay my house off, um, which I'm already paying it off pretty fast. Uh, I make more than the minimum. I make more. I pay over the, you know, the, the expected amount every month. Not by a lot, but I do pay extra every month. It's the only debt I have. This house is the only debt I have. This is, the, this is it. I have no credit card debt. I have nothing, just this house. And one of the reasons I can say that is because I don't buy shit like Lunchables. I don't pay somebody to mow my yard. I don't get my nails done. Again, not that there's anything wrong with it. Any damn thing wrong with it. But, you know, I've talked about money management before. And I'm not trying to lecture. I'm not trying to be a bitch. I'm just, I'm just trying to help. I'm just telling you what has worked for me. And I didn't get here overnight. You know, I've, I've been through three divorces. I left a cult and a, my first marriage, which left me financially wrecked. My second marriage left me financially wrecked. I had to give him a huge chunk out of my 401k, which he never contributed to. I put every penny of that money in there on top of paying all of our bills because that piece of shit didn't work for the last three years we were married. Right before the crash in 2008, I had to give him a huge chunk of my 401k, and then the crash hit and dropped my 401k to damn near nothing. And I had to build it back up from almost nothing. I had I had less. I pro, I might have had six thousand dollars in there when it was all over, and I had a lot more than that before. But he got his big chunk, and then the crash hit. Right, I'm talking like the next week. I have come back from nothing less than nothing, more than once. I have come back from shitty credit. My first marriage wrecked my credit. My second marriage hit my credit. Third marriage fortunately did not. Third marriage didn't really affect me financially too much. Um, I've come back and you can too. If, you, if your credit is not great, you can work on it, but you have to be patient. It is a marathon. You have to work on it every single day. And one of the ways to work on it is to figure out what you need and what you want. Wants and needs are two very different things. 
and sometimes you have to do without. And I know people don't like doing without. Life is hard. Life is hard. Sometimes you just got to do it. You just got to get through the hard parts to get to the better parts. Life is not always going to be easy and it's not always going to be fun. It amazes me the number of people who just seem to assume that there's that that, that that's not the way of things. That's been the way of things throughout human history. It's not new. You know, you, sometimes you have to struggle. And I've been there. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to stand in line at the grocery store and look at my carefully selected items like, I don't even know if I can afford this. I'm going to have to put it on a credit card. I, I don't have any money. Not because I went out and blew my money, but because I was raising two little children by myself and I wasn't making a whole lot of money at that time. And I wasn't getting help from anybody. And I know what it's like. I know what that feels like. And I know... I know what it's like to, to lay in bed at night and think about stuff like that and worry about paying your bills. I know. I have been there and I don't ever want to go back there. So it makes me extra vigilant when it comes to spending money that I don't have to. You know, why buy Lunchables when I can buy lunch meat and bread and cheese and it's much more economical to, you know, like, here you go. You can make a whole sandwich. You can take some cheese and crackers, whatever you want to do. And it's cheaper than buying those little pre-packaged things. I don't know. To me, that's a luxury item. And I just, it's not, it's not worth, it's not a good value to me. So I don't buy it. If I think something is not a good value, I don't buy it. With every item, I have a limit. Like the, the cereal I used to get, the, the Fit and Active Vitality cereal, when it, it's more than doubled in price, and I just looked at it and said, it's not worth that. I'm not paying what they're asking for that cereal. It's not worth it. And I quit buying it. I quit buying it probably six months ago. I haven't bought a box in over at least six months. And I don't plan to buy any more. It's just not worth what they're charging for it. Does that mean I can't afford it? No, I absolutely can't afford it. It's just not worth it to me. And if something is not worth it to me, I won't buy it. It doesn't matter how much money I have. It has nothing to do with my money. It has to do with what you're expecting me to pay for that thing. And I don't think that thing is worth that. So I'm not mad. I'm not mad. It's just that comment made me think about it. And it's like, I never said I couldn't afford Lunchables. And maybe you're just being snarky. Maybe you're trying to be funny. I don't know. I blocked them either way. So if you weren't trying to be a bitch, well, sorry, you're, <laughs> you're blocked anyway. Because you did come across as kind of a bitch. And if you think I'm a bitch, you can just stop watching me. I totally get it. I totally understand because sometimes I do come across as a bitch and people don't like it because I don't just smile. I'm not smiling all the time and they don't like that. Um, but this is me in real life on a Sunday night before school starts and I'm a little bit on edge right now because I'm just like, <sighs> I have a feeling something's going to go wrong tomorrow and like somebody will not get out of here on time and <sighs> first day of school is just ugh, leaves me frazzled. I think everybody's ready though. Everybody's got their supplies. They got their book bags ready. They got everything ready. So I got to get up extra early in the morning. So I'm going to brush my teeth and go to bed. Um, but yeah, if, if you're struggling financially, I, I know what it feels like to have that. It's like a, a gnawing pain in the pit of your stomach, that stress. And it never goes away. And I know what that feels like. And maybe maybe my, my stupid advice will help at least one person. If that's true, then that's what I want. I want somebody to maybe benefit from, from my past and things that I've been through. And, you know, I just want to help people. I really do. I just want to help people. Um, but I don't live an extravagant lifestyle. You know, I don't have fancy shit. You know, I really don't. Uh, but I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not really worried about what anybody thinks. and It's just never been like a big priority of mine to worry about what other people think of me. I don't really care. And if you think I'm a snarky bitch and you're tired of my attitude and you don't want to watch anymore, I get it. I hear you. Okay. But yeah, it's, um, it's more about what I it's about what I want to afford not what I can afford and I don't feel like 
I'm not going to allocate money to things that I don't think are worthwhile and I don't think Lunchables are worthwhile and that's why I don't buy them. If my kids want a Lunchable, they can use some of their allowance that they've earned doing chores or working, like my older son. They can take some of their own money and buy it. They never do though because they agree with me that they're not worth what they cost. They see the price and they go, oh, Never mind, because I've taken them to the store. Sometimes we will make a trip to a supermarket or Walmart or wherever. Like, come on, you go look at the prices of some food, especially in the last few months, because I've stopped buying most snack type stuff. And I said, I want you to come with me. We're going to take a little field trip to the local supermarket, and I'm going to show you why I don't buy the, all these snacks anymore. I said, come on, I want you to see the prices of these items. And I want you to tell me honestly, would you pay that? Okay, you see how much that costs? Would you pay that? For that bag of chips would you would you pay that for that snack and they're like no god ugh. exactly so I want them to understand you know it's it's not it's about what it's worth to you and to me the prices on so many things have gone up so much that they're not worth it to me and I won't pay it but I've never bought my kids lunchables because I well in the past I legitimately couldn't afford them I didn't have money um, so I didn't. I would make their lunches myself. And it was a lot cheaper. So anyway, I'll shut up now. I gotta go to bed. I'm sorry to rant, and I'm not trying to come across as some kind of self-righteous goody goody. I'm really not. But I felt like it was a good point and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. So I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm not here to I'm not here to hurt your feelings. But you might want to ask yourself this. If what I said really hurt your feelings, why did it hurt your feelings? What it, where did that come from? Are you mad at me? Or is it something else? I mean, if it, if it hurts your feelings, you might want to think about that a little bit. Like, where is that hurt actually coming from? Something to think about. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I really hope you have a great day. I'll see you again soon.